<laughs> you know what time it is? Today's 3D print. Mega print us out. I got big prints. First couple small ones. Fix the problem with the Sunlu PLA. It is, um, it needs to be printed hot. <laughs> I mean, really hot. This one, nice and strong. <laughs> Not as strong as PLA. I can tell that it was going to crack if I tried to squeeze much harder, but it can handle it now. This is now a usable filament. Thank God, because it is beautiful. That print quality really is nice. I mean, that's print quality is a combination of obviously the printer. I mean, no matter how good your filament is, if you have a crap printer, you get less than perfect results. That's off the Z5F. I got it back to the way it was. Not perfect, but usable. I had twisted the Z-stepper. Um, this, of course, this little bit of perfection. Wonderful 3D printing bliss is off the Ender 2, of course. Um, 245 Celsius. <laughs> Holy crap, that needed to be hot. <laughs> but at 245, the layer bonding is now strong enough that it approaches normal PLA. Um, that's healing up reasonably well. I've been letting it air out and spraying it with alcohol just to make sure it's nice and clean. You know, no inflammation, no infection, so I got lucky. As long as I don't nail that thing again, I'll be okay. But, um, this is the culprit. I don't know if I showed you guys my Leatherman Skeletool. This thing is amazing, by the way. But it's also stupidly sharp. That's how you want your tools. That's why you're not supposed to clip toward you. Um, I don't know if you guys heard, but um, someone rear-ended me. No injuries. The crumble zones did all their job. The car was even still drivable, but it was damaged enough that they totaled it. So I had to get a new car. That has pros and cons. Big time. And that's covering the light. That has big time pros and cons. Pro is I got a 2016 Nissan Leaf for a very, very good price, 18000 And I got the same payment that I was paying on my current car. And, um, but now I got to pay for five years instead of the three I had left on the old car. But I'm actually going to pay less interest. I $1,650 in interest total. My credit union is very good to me. And, um, thank God for the gap insurance because the insurance company valued my old car at like 7000 but I owed 11000 <laughs> So the gap insurance wiped that out and I'll get $1,000 off the new car. So in reality I was looking at a new battery for the, the old car in about a year. That's about $6,000. So 6 plus the 11 that I owe is 17 which is almost exactly what I paid for the new car. 18 minus the 1000 I'm going to get back from the gap insurance so it's the same price and I end up with a virtually brand new car, 5,000 miles on it. So I'm happy my, my new Nissan Leaf. I'm never gonna own an electric car again. I'll have gas cars, but I will always have one electric car. I love my electric car. If you can live with limitations, you can get a Leaf so cheap. I mean, if you don't if you don't need the 100 miles that I need, because that's what I'm getting on it, I'm getting about 100 miles. My old one, 54 miles. <laughs> oh, 60, I was getting 60. 54 miles to work and I had six miles left. So I was getting about 60 miles on the old Leaf, 2012. And it's blue, so I didn't have to get any black or silver or white one. Yeah. I like bright colors. Uh, I hate the fact that I had to get this shirt in black because it's the only color they had. White would be a bad idea, so I had to get it in black. But eventually I'm going to get an orange today's 3D print shirt with black letters. Because I love orange. But, um, time for more prints. Okay, do I have any little prints to show you? Oh. I got that new Sakura pink filament from 3D Salyatech. I love it. It is such a cool color pink. You guys already saw the, the little Octopus SD card holder that I made. I got a couple of them. But um, I'm also making one special edition rocket kit. So centering ring, nose cone, motor retention so I can have a Sakura pink. Somebody also said breast awareness edition, but whatever. It's a cool color. I, I like the color. That it's not your normal, you know, normal pink. It's a really cool, nice, solid pink. I like it. But, um, type of prints. Um, I'm not going to say who because I don't know if they want me to. I'll let them post if they want me to. Um, and I can't give you a link to the SDL files because they're private. But if they wish to post them, they can. But I'm printing out that little troll. So, that's how I printed this without support. Easy. 
He cut his head off at the chin and he turned him upside down. <laughs> no support. I have infill here because of how flat this is. And I have infill up here just so I won't have to use a zillion layers for the feet. Just a little bit of infill, just that much. Just to make sure the toes print good and it printed perfectly. Um, it almost failed on the fingertips here, no big deal. And it almost failed at his butt crack. I didn't realize how flat it got here. <laughs> that looked really bad. <laughs> But anyway, that will be coming soon. Damn troll. But, um, Luby released another print. I love when Luby releases prints. First, I found one of her old prints. I was trying to decide what color to print it in, and then I realized, hello, I still have the white Ultra PLA silk. Obviously, it's a swan. You print it in white. Look at that. It's one of her older models, so it's a little rough as far as, um, the smoothest in the texture, but the white silk Ultra PLA from Free Solutech is stunning. Now I realize I cannot print Moon City. I can't. I have to learn how to hack that file. I have to remove the city from the moon and print it as two parts that I then put together. The reason is I have to do the moon in this silk, in the, in the white Ultra PLA silk, because that would look amazing for the moon. The swan is very cool. Printed perfectly, even this little part here that was a separate island all its own, printed fine. This has no infill, no support, nothing. I don't see a single flaw anywhere on here. All I did was print it with four perimeters. That's it. And it printed stunning. No errors, no imperfections, so it is a perfectly adequate model for a zero support, zero infill print. So that is very cool. I love Luby's designs. I gotta print her lizard. She made a nice little lizard I wanna print. But her newest one, she just released. And this is why I can't do Moon City until I can split it because I gotta use this filament to do the city part. This is that CC I3D gold um, silk PLA. God, I love the squirrel. He's so cute. Squirrel! <laughs> I took a sharpie to the eyes just to give them color. It's perfect. I might get a brown one marker and do the acorn and that's it. Maybe um, maybe the tips of his nails, the eyes, the nose, and the acorn and that's it. Leave everything else the gold because this gold is beautiful. I really like this gold. And this stuff's like 25 bucks a kilogram too. I think it's 24 dollars 25 dollars something like that. Very affordable. And this again, printed, um, no support, no infill printed perfectly. Even um, she did good. She made sure the tops of the haunches and the tops of the toes were a, a peak instead of a flat. So they printed without infill, without support. She even added a little bit to the bottom of the acorn here to make sure that didn't need any kind of support to print. Perfect. Luby did a wonderful job on making this um, 3D printable without support and without infill. It's beautiful. Very, very cool squirrel. I love my squirrel. Squirrel's cool. Put it on a CR-10. So was the swan and um, well, everything else put it on the Ender 2, but the, the two boobies, the swan and the, um, the squirrel and the headless damn troll were printed all on the Ender. I'm not, I'm not the end of the CR-10. And the CR-10 is busy printing the head for the troll now. <laughs> but there you go. I love, I love, I love, I love the squirrel. And this color is so perfect for the squirrel. That, that's the perfect color to print the squirrel. Beautiful. Just like the white was the perfect color to print the swan. I love this thing. Then we have the as the one viewer called it, kinetic print. This is cool. This is the wave droplet simulator. All of this was printed on the Ender 2, and all of it was printed without support. I even figured out, as you saw in my little quickie video, I even figured out how to print the drive shaft without support by splitting it in half, printing the two halves, and gluing them together. It worked, and it came out great. The only issue I had was that this would not go in. It was a little too big for whatever reason. 
might be the way I printed it. I did it in vase mode. Vertically, of course, standing up on its tip. <laughs> of course, the editor is amazing. I love that printer so much. I can't wait till I have more of them set up and cranking out stuff, but everything on here. Right up against the stops, right up against the limit switches to print these discs and this base. Just barely fit. She also has, um, um, I think it's she, I don't know who it was. I, I want to say she for some reason, but he or she has um, another variation of these two plates that are just strips, so they're not round like this, they're not so big. But I kind of like the round one, although I will use the strip version when I do the mega size. I might even wait to print the mega size one until I have the CR10 S4 set up, because then I can do it even bigger. I can do it 400 millimeters across instead of 300 millimeters across. Actually, possibly even bigger, because uh, I can do a diagonal. I might be able to hit like 450. Oh no, these would still be rings. I can make these a little bigger, but not by much. So my limitation would be how big I can make this outer ring right here. Um, that'll be my limit to how big I can make it. Um, these two here I glued on, so it'll stay put. Uh, one modification I made was that the, the spacer and cap didn't work for me. They fit, but they were too loose, and they weren't long enough to actually capture this where it needs to be captured. Because you need to align that shaft in there so that these don't jam up so they stay on their appropriate rings and don't jam up um, so what I do is I, I just took my knife and cut the end of the cap off so it was just a cylinder and then I used the, the spare spacer I printed here and I just I, I lined it until I got it where I liked it and then I glued them in place so now the shaft tends to stay put within that limitation right there and doesn't move and I glued the handle on the handle is the only thing that gave me trouble you see the the tip of the handle there isn't perfect because it was such a small thing to print. Even with me blowing on it with my mouth and the fan blowing on it, it, it's just, it was so skinny it had trouble with that. I probably needed to slow it down a little bit to print that, but we'll see. But it came out, it works. So what this does is it creates the waveform you see when a water droplet hits the ground. Isn't that cool? You're going to see it stutter a little bit because I'm tilting it so you guys can see it. So sometimes the rings don't go down all the way because they're gravity driven, of course. So here it is. There we go. You see that outer ring kind of sticks. If I hold it like this, it doesn't do that. But because I'm tilting it so you guys can see it, sometimes it gets hung up. You know, it doesn't want to drop back down. Isn't that cool? So if you look at it in slow motion, this is basically what happens when you take a drop of water and drop it into a flat pool of water. You know, it hits, it creates that little divot in the middle, and then immediately the wave starts propagating out, and the droplet of water pulls back and, and throws a drop up the middle again. So if you go on YouTube and watch a droplet in slow motion, that's what it does. Isn't that cool? I can watch that all day. <laughs> I'm probably going to paint this, I'm going to probably do these in blue. Maybe I'll even reprint the rings, because these come, these come off after it's been assembled. These just slide in place. So I could easily print these in multiple colors, or just print them in this, all, in this piece and these in blue. Because I have the Sunlit Blue. So maybe I'll do that. Although, it'd be a little brittle. The Ultra PLA Blue would look pretty cool. And so would the sparkle blue from Zyro. Hmm. I gotta think about that. I'll probably just do it in a regular blue. But there you go. That's the one I've been working on for the last several days on the Ender. So all this is printed on the Ender. I love that. Very cool. That is neat. I printed this at 0 0.12 layer height to make it smoother because it is a little rough and you can, it sometimes catches the um, the wheels, but as I use it, it smooths out. What I was thinking about doing is putting some Teflon tape on the wheels to make it a little smoother and quieter to operate, but that's okay. I'm happy with it. As I use it, it gets better and better, as you can see. There's the drive shaft going. Isn't that cool?
That is neat. That is very cool. I like that. I made the the little double-edged safety razor spatulas that have to help get underneath the print. And they don't work that great. I mean, they kind of work for smaller parts. They don't really help for bigger parts. Um, the blade itself is too flexible. So what will happen is it will bend or if it catches into the plastic, it will curve up into the plastic and just tear apart the model anyway. You know, put a little slit in it. It doesn't destroy it or damage it, but um, they're maybe it's just because of my printing service, they're minimally useful. Interesting print, but it doesn't really help a whole lot. What else? Did I do anything else? Oh yeah. This is a in-progress print. I'm working on a Stargate. Printed on a CR-10. See the details are amazing. All the little details in there. Here's Earth, right there. That's how you dial home. Don't forget your home address. But uh, one problem I have is that these actually aren't part of the model. They're separate. Mm-hmm. Um, what it is, is this is a little thicker, and there's a, a bottom ring that these are actually connected to. Well, I cut out that middle section because... Really? you mess with me? This is the back half of the Stargate ring. And these two go together like this. And there's a, a larger ring here that these all join to. So making it all one piece when it's done. But the problem is I had to remove that because I wanted it in two pieces with a ring in the center that would have um, um, a, an opening that was bigger than this opening. Because what I want to do is I want to first, a couple different things, I want to print a couple of these. I think this would be very cool as a bathroom mirror, like a stand mirror. So it would be 3D, you'd have both sides of the Stargate and you'd have a mirror you can look into. I also wanted to make this my dry erase board. So if I had to do um, any notes for you guys to show you something, I can pull out my Stargate dry erase board to write on. I think that'd be pretty cool. And um, what I can do now though, now that I know about it, I can just remove all of these and get rid of them. Because I'm going to print that center ring with these on it and split it in half and just double it. So I have two of them. And so this would be four pieces. This and this. And then the two inner rings which will hold the mirror or um, dry erase board and then they will have these attached to it projecting forward so that when you put the four pieces together you end up with all the appropriate components together I think that would be pretty cool um, one thing I did to improve my detail is first off of course I printed this at 0.12 layer height but I also um, the chevrons also came out great those chevrons, I didn't realize they were overhangs, but they printed beautifully. These are the locking chevrons when they dial the Stargate. Um, what I did was I, I made, I, I distorted the scale of the print. I made it taller on Z only, so that more layers would be available to comprise these details, and it worked. The chevrons came out great. It even got most of the detail here. I don't know if you could see it, but there's a pretty decent amount of detail there. I can't really tell on the small screen if you're seeing that. This camera is pretty good, so you might be seeing that. But I want to give you different angles in hopes there. I, actually, I think I can see it now. That's pretty cool. But that gives me nice detail on the chevrons. Very cool. It even got these inner ridges good, even though they were overhangs. They printed fine. I'm very happy with that. That's, that is incredibly cool. Um, that's one of the reasons I want an S5, is so I can do a 500 millimeter version of this. Yeah, I love Stargate. Stargate was one of my favorite shows of all time, right up there with Star Trek. But um, yeah, this is cool. I can get rid of all these now that I don't, I don't need them. But um, I want to make them part of the other print. I keep breaking them off and losing them anyway. <laughs> and it'll just be easier to handle if I get rid of them. There we go. So there's your naked Stargate. And then when I print the center two rings to hold whatever I put in here, then those rings will have these on it, on both sides. I just double it. And it will come out very cool. I like that. I noticed one was missing the locking chevron. 
I gotta see if that's in the model because there was no splooge on the bed when it was done so I think that just wasn't there that might be where it goes into whatever stand you put it on I don't know but yeah I'm coming out of your stargate <laughs> close the iris <laughs> Oh, that would suck. Have your face halfway through and just turn off the Stargate. <laughs> that would suck. But, um, yeah, that is cool. That, that's one of my favorite prints. Took a very long time to tune that and get that bed nice and level. But that came out very cool. There we go. That's all lined up. As you can see, both sides of the gate. Yeah. Very happy with that. I like that. All right can't think of anything else. Um, small prints come out great on the Z5F. You know, here's a little Marvin. Here's the latest Benji. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of noise in the surface, but the overall shape is pretty good. That noise is whatever, there's a, um, it has to be coming from the interface between the rollers and the extrusion. Because I don't feel it when I touch the stepper. I only feel it when I touch the bed. It's a low frequency vibration, you know, a rumble as the, the bed moves back and forth and that rumble is being transferred into ringing and ghosting noise pattern in the surface of the prints. Which is a pity because I think you could otherwise be a halfway decent printer. This is a printer that had um, big potential for execution. So as of now, I'm unless you're a tinkerer and you want a cheap $200 printer to play with, I'm leaning toward and avoid this printer. Um, I like it. It's cool. I'm going to use it. It's interesting. I love how quiet it is. God, is it quiet. But by the time you put the money into it to make it a good printer, um, I feel two flat spots or something on the x-axis. As I move the head across, you can feel it... Uh, two spots where you can feel it as you go back and forth. Almost like a, a wheel with a flat spot and you're, you're feeling that flat spot hit. Um, although it doesn't appear to be affecting the prints too much, but I'm concerned about it. The vibration is definitely feeling, affecting the print and there is some sort of shifting as it's going vertical. And I don't understand why. The vertical appears to be the smoothest axis on this printer. But as you can see on here, there is some definite goofiness going on on the z-axis on this thing. I'm turning it all around hoping you guys can see this, but um, when I look at it, it looks like salmoning, like a delta printer. You because know, you have none of that on this. You know, your perturbations on this are on the layers. This has perturbations that go up the print, like this, like salmoning, like on a delta. That's weird. It's a, it's a straight up Cartesian printer using V slot wheels, but you can clearly I don't know I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Uh, maybe right there you can see it all, all the way up these little arcs up the entire side of the print. There it is. I can see it, so I'm pretty sure you can see it. And then of course it's not smooth, not even close. I mean, now this is an unfair comparison. This is a Ender 2. I mean, these things are little monsters. So you, you really can't compare it to an Ender 2. But look at the difference. Yeah, not even close. This would be usable, but this is not clean. This is not great. More organic shapes might be a little more forgiving because they're not such a predictable, smooth surface where you can see obvious perturbations. So if you were to print something like this, it wouldn't look so bad on this printer, but if you printed something with a lot of very smooth surfaces like this, you're going to notice those perturbations big time. So um, I'll be having a review soon on it because I'm having enough troubles with it that I'm not going to do it. I'm going to still use it for six months and it's working fine. The printer works great. It's just I'm not happy with that. And I think that is inherent in the design of the printer. I think the the wide carriage plate is the source of that problem. I think I, I don't know if it's the acrylic or if it was just badly cut acrylic, but I, I my suspicion is either bad roller bearings, which would be pretty easy to test, buy some roller bearings, put them in it, uh, which I might do, because if I can make it into a usable bot, I'd like to. But um, 
while fixing the roller bearings would get rid of the noise, it won't get rid of this. That is something else, and I'm not sure what it is. And I'm not sure how to diagnose it further than I have. I mean, it looks like it's going up and down smooth to me. It, the, the, the equilateral triangle bearing units are straight and true. They appear to run smooth. I don't get it. The only thing I haven't done is I'm going to remove the, um, the lead screw altogether, just get rid of the lead screw, so that I can then, with my hands, move it up and down freely without resistance and see if I can feel something. Maybe the beams aren't totally parallel or something, or I don't know, or maybe there's flat spots in the roller bearings on the, the Z-axis, I don't know. But uh, for now, this printer is, unless you're a tinkerer who wants a cheap $200 printer to play with that has potential because it's got pretty decent parts, this is an avoid. Stay away from this printer. Uh, if, if you're looking for a relatively build it, turnkey, start printing, like an Ender or a Wanhao Duplicator i3 or CR10 or even an ANET E10. The ANET E10 requires very little work to make it a good printer. You just have to fix a couple of QC issues from the factory. Once you fix those minor QC issues, the printer is perfectly reliable. I use that printer every day. Uh, this printer, on the other hand, I spent a lot of time tinkering with. One time I had the damn thing keep turning off on me. It would get 10% into a print, and then it would go it would go deaf and zero on one of the thermistors, which of course would, it would, now this is good, the firmware would fail safe and turn off the heaters. So of course it would start air printing. Um, turned out just to be a loose connection. I unplugged all the thermistor wires, plugged them back in, and it's been fine since, but it's it's it keeps me busy. And to me, that's not a good sign for both design choices and quality control. So while I want to like it, I can't suggest you buy it because it, it's unless you want a tinkerer's printer. If you want a tinkerer's printer, go buy it. Have fun with it. It is pretty cool looking. But if you don't want to sit there and tinker with a printer, and if you're not if you're not happy sitting there playing with an ANA A8, just just avoid this printer. Get an Ender 2, get an ANA E10, get a CR10. You know, uh, a, a Watt Hell Duplicator I3, a Maker Select. You can get Maker Selects for 250 bucks. That's only 30 dollars more than the. Um, than the Z5F, which is a pity because it's got a beautiful build volume of 220, 220, 220. I really like that build volume because that lets me print these. I cannot print these on a Maker Select, not enough Z height. I could probably modify the design to make it fit, but I don't want to. <laughs> I like the way it looks. Um, I also can't print these nose cones on a Maker Select on a Mod Hell, but I can on the Z5F, so I am going to keep playing with it. If I find the solution, I'll update you guys and tell you what the solution was and how to fix it. But for now, unless you want to tinker, avoid that printer. 30 seconds left. I am going to leave it at this. I am going to make a pair. I will be taking the electric car because I have enough range. I can drive up to just out of New York City, stop at a Nissan dealership, Chad Charge, drive into New York, come back out of New York, Chad Charge again, drive home. And um, so that'll save me 40 bucks in gas, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, if you're going to make a fair, I'll see you there. You guys have a great night.